Test number three is a cause and effect one in a sense. We say that increasing carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is going to cause the temperature to go up. So we compare those two curves. This red curve is the IPCC temperature curve from 1860 through to 2000. And the black curve is the ramping up of carbon dioxide. And what we see is that at precisely the time after the Second World War that the carbon dioxide emissions are increasing at their greatest rate, the temperature goes down. So test number three, there is very little correlation between these two curves and that cause and effect uh, just doesn't work. Test number four is this wonderful diagram, probably one of the most exciting science diagrams of the 20th century from the Vostok Ice Core. The orange curve at the top is the um, carbon dioxide, and the red curve in the middle is the temperature. Ignore methane in blue along the bottom. And we see a very close correlation between the orange and the red curves, which led people to immediately say, aha, there's the smoking gun. We told you so. Every time the carbon dioxide goes up, the temperature goes up. Every time it goes down, the temperature goes down. But let's just look at the, the bit in the box here, and let's zoom in and look at that a little bit, which is the change from the last glaciation uh, to the uh, modern warm period. So we're going at the right-hand side of this graph 20,000 years ago, and the left-hand side 10,000 years ago. Here's the temperature warming up. Here's the start of the modern warm period, and we're out here somewhere today. This is what the geologists call the Holocene. This is the last ice age. Here's carbon dioxide increasing in parallel with the temperature. We told you so until you look in detail. When you look in detail, you find that the change in the temperature precedes by between a few hundred and a thousand or so years, the change in carbon dioxide. Say that again. Change in temperature precedes the change in carbon dioxide. This is a simple cause and effect. Our hypothesis says it's the other way around. You've never heard anybody argue that lung cancer causes smoking. <laughs> Our fifth and last test is the so-called fingerprint method. All the physicists agree, and these are the computer models of the IPCC, that when you plot uh, temperature against latitude, this is 75 degrees north, 75 degrees south with the equator in the middle, and against height in the atmosphere in kilometers on the right-hand side, 4, 8, 12, up to 28 kilometers, that if you have greenhouse warming forced by greenhouse gases, the fingerprint you should produce is warming in the troposphere, upper troposphere in the tropics, around 10 to 12 kilometers, and also warming at the surface at the poles. Problem is, when we look at the empirical data, we find it's warming at the South Pole. We also find average of all the models, they all predict increased rates of warming in the troposphere at heights of 8 through 12 kilometers. The actual data of different sorts and the satellite data are the uh, uh, yellow triangle and diamond. All of those fall outside the range of uh, 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 error range of the model predictions and indicate this pattern. So the empirical test of the theoretical prediction is it fails. Five tests, five failures. The greenhouse fo uh, hypothesis is thereby falsified. <laughs> You'd think from the newspapers and television that this is a secret. <laughs> it's not a secret. It's known to thousands of scientists worldwide, including many at this meeting. 103 of them, in December last year, during the Bali meeting, wrote to the Secretary General of the United Nations. And in the letter that they wrote to him, they said, this letter details some of the serious science misrepresentations. That's a pretty heavy accusation. Uh, in the IPCC summaries for policymakers. It calls attention to the outdated nature of some IPCC conclusions, and it shows that balanced economic analyses do not support measures to restrict energy consumption for the purpose of diminishing carbon dioxide emissions. The signatories further explain that the current UN approach of curbing carbon dioxide emissions is likely to increase 
human suffering because attempts to drastically cut carbon dioxide emissions will seriously slow development. Who wrote this stuff? Must be a bunch of cowboys. <laughs> well, the list includes two of the world's greatest living physicists, Professor Zicchichi from Italy and Freeman Dyson from the United States. It, it includes winners of the Mills Medal in Cloud Physics of the Royal Meteorological Society, uh, the Chapman Medal of the Royal Astronomical Society, and the Meisinger and Cheney Awards of the American Meteorological Society. Out of 103 signatories, 24 are emeritus professors. So, of course, this letter was on the front page of the New York Times, and the London Times, and the Australian. It received not a mention in the world press. Why not? Why does it matter? This is just an academic squabble. Well, one bunch of pointy heads are saying that global warming is happening, and another bunch saying it isn't. Well, it matters because in the last month, we have had power emergencies, first in South Africa, where the mines have shut down, had to shut down because the electricity grid failed. Secondly, in New Zealand, where the wind failed to blow and they had a power station out of commission being maintained. <clears throat> Thirdly, in the United States, you all saw it a couple of days ago, the same thing happened, the wind stopped blowing in West Texas, so we had a power crisis. And fourthly, in Europe, where the estimates are that two trillion dollars worth of new energy generating resources have to be built in the near future, and the global warming alarmists will not let you build nuclear power stations and will not let you build coal-fired power stations. You might think that's a problem, but don't worry. The minister in South Africa that dealt with this first emergency has the answer for you. Go to sleep earlier so that you can grow and be cleverer. Boil less water, use the microwave rather than the stove, take a shower and not a shallow bath. Take a shower indeed. <laughs> okay, important conclusions. The assumption that prior to the Industrial Revolution the Earth had a stable climate is just simply wrong. Climates always change, it always will. There's absolutely nothing unusual about present day rates or magnitude of climate change. Atmospheric carbon dioxide is neither a pollutant nor is it the primary forcing agent for temperature change. Rather, carbon dioxide is a benefit for humankind. Try telling your teenage daughter that. <laughs> Attempting to stop climate change is an expensive act of utter futility. The only sensible thing to do about climate change is to prepare for it in both directions, both for the beneficial warmings and for the much more dangerous coolings, for both are certain to occur in the future. And finally, don't forget, this is you.